G'day, g'day, Clayton here from XY Advisor. Just spoke with Ben Nash from XY Advisor and a bunch of other things. He's on Sunrise every other bloody day with Koshi. Uh, but before all that happened, if you go back many, many years, uh, in fact, kind of that's where XY started from. Me and Benny were sitting around trying to figure out how to be good advisors and we just figured if we gave you know, the, the banner of something called XY Advisor, that people would share with us what they do so well. And he's just continued doing that. And over over the years, I've, I've looked at a lot of the decisions that he's chosen over time on how to acquire clients specifically was very intelligent uh, and, and some of the best I've heard of in the market. And so I'm kicking off a, a new series on the XY podcast today with this marketing series or client acquisition series. So, so absolutely, it's for financial planners, um, but it could technically be used by pretty much any professional service. And that's kind of where I want to take this series, um, which is learn how to, acqu- how to acquire professional services clients. And I think Ben does this really, really well. So hopefully you enjoy. This episode is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Launching nearly 20 years ago, this ASX-listed company is ranked number one for overall platform functionality and user satisfaction by investment trends for the past three years. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important now more than ever to embrace new technology and enhance the way you do business. With this change comes your chance to innovate, explore new perspectives, and realize new efficiencies. NetWealth is here to support you on this journey by providing you market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help you innovate in your business. Visit the NetWealth website to learn more and get the PDS which clients should read before making a decision. Products issued by NetWealth Investments Limited. Hi, Ben. Hey, Clayton. How's it going? Oh, good, man. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Uh, I'm so I'd... glad you didn't use that fucking ridiculous intro that you normally do. I oh, know, I know. That's because I know how much it upsets you, so I didn't do it. <laughs> um, this this podcast, like, it's a little bit different, obviously. You're the, the guest. Weird. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. But it, I think it's going to be helpful and valuable. Um, so doing a, a marketing series. And the marketing series is... It's definitely for financial planners, but it's pretty much for any professional service offering. I think, oh, and, yeah. yeah, no matter no matter what you were, right? Like, so I want to talk about what you do um, in a, in a way that gets professional services clients. Because if we go back, and I, I wanted to start with you, because if we go back uh, about five years ago, before you had your company, and I was just starting my company, and the way that I chose to get clients the, and the way that you chose to get clients were two- Buying f- grandfather commissions, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Was that what you mean? As in joining B&I. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but buying someone's business and uh, it was definitely a part of it, but um, but joining B&I. And, uh, and you chose to go down a workshop uh, route and I always thought that was quite interesting. And even though I haven't heard you say this for many years, it was something that always stuck with me. And I, I thought to myself, I want to see how this pans out. And I think the both of us can say it's panned out really well. And the sentence that you said to me was, I don't want to be reliant on anyone else for clients. Yeah, for sure, man. I wanted to be able to, to make my own reign, you know, like uh, I think you when you – and. So many people, they rely on these traditional, you know, um, centers of influence and accountants and, uh, and mortgage brokers. And you're always you're relying on, uh, on somebody else to feed you clients, which, you know, it works. I've seen it work. There are a lot of businesses where it does work. But for me, I wanted to, you know, I got a very sort of particular way of doing things very particular style of advice that I wanted to give and the people that I wanted to work with as well. So I wanted I wanted to be able to have a message that connected with those people and had them sort of pulling instead of, you know, instead of being pushed across to me from a, you know, from an accountant. Uh, and the other thing that I found with, I wanted to work with young people, you know, when I start before I started my own business, it was more sort of first home buyers and, and a little uh, uh, like high value advice, but but lower than what I'm doing right now. And then these days now, I'm working with executives and you know high income PAYG typically individuals. And I find that 
a lot of uh, like we were just chatting to a mortgage broker on on, uh, on one of the other podcasts, and he was saying like first home buyers are difficult, and not a lot of mortgage brokers want to deal with first home buyers. A lot of my clients are first home buyers, or you know probably at least half they don't, they've not bought a property before. The other half may have uh, you know bought it bought a property and looking for that next step. So. Um, yeah, for them, people don't want to work with them. Accountants typically don't want to work with these sorts of PAYG individuals either. It's, it's something that's slowly getting phased out. So when I set up my business, I wanted to have a, a way to bring in business where I knew it was based on my effort and not on anyone else feeling, you know, the need to or the desire or the inclination to, you know, introduce me to people. Yeah. And if you look at it now, you know, you, you're on Sunrise every now and again, you got to, you've just released a book and, and I guess that's the glossy cover, but it started with, you know, uh, sending people downloadable stuff on, on LinkedIn, yep. right? And, and, you know, four years ago. And so I wouldn't mind just going through a bit uh, through that journey, um, which, uh, which has caused the success that I see. Um, and one of the things I've always respected about you, mate, is your, your ability to, uh, go and find out people that you want to learn from, find you the most, uh, absorbing human in the world, um, probably makes up for not having a personality. I think that, I think that really helps. I've got one that's just a bit bent. <laughs> um, so if we go right back to the, back to the start, you've come from Dixon's. So, so I, I mean, I sat next to you. You were the size of Hulk back then, deadlifting 200 kilos, no beard. Um, and, but you, no hair. no hair, you were selling though, right? You still were selling at that, that point in time, you and Mark Power, you guys were nailing it, right? You, you, you were beating everyone else. Um, I and, like to win. Yeah. And, and, and so from early in your advice career, you, you knew how to, uh, how to bring clients on board, right? But there was an advantage there being at Dixon was that all you had to do was sit, sit next to the phone. Because yeah. they were spending millions sure. yeah, yeah, of yeah. dollars and yeah. bringing leads into the company. So that wasn't something you had to do. So you knew how to bring clients on board once they were interested. And then you moved across to successful ways, similar similar scenario. They, they'd spent heaps mm. of money, yep, bringing you leads, and then you, you did your thing. Um, and then when you started your business, it was the first time that you had to be responsible for bringing in business. Correct. And I went away to B&I, and uh, I've got to say, quite frankly, doesn't work. In my personal opinion, um, it's the worst thing in the world. Um, I'm sure there's probably advisors out there that disagree with me, but that was my that, yeah. that's my view. You, on the other hand, you are engaged with Steve Salvia. Steve, the Italian stallion, Salvia. Yeah, great yeah. guy. Mate, tell us about what you learnt there. Well, I think, yeah, like, uh, so Steve's amazing, uh, the great guy and, and a great coach as well. Yeah. I think, like, yeah, like, it, one of the big things, the most powerful things, and it was before I even engaged Steve as a coach because he, he would do these days where he would just, you know, he's just travelling around and he'd come up to Sydney and, uh, do these events where you spend a day intensive and pay, well, I can't even remember how much it was, whatever. It wasn't that um, much. I went wasn't to that much. Yeah. No, it wasn't that much. Because yeah. that's his that's his funnel, right? Yeah. Which is, which is fine, right? Yeah. Um, but the most powerful thing that he'd ever done is, is for me, was the, the four forces model, which is like this circle thing and, uh, you know, hook him up. I'm sure he'll explain it to you better than I will for anyone listening uh, that wants to know about it. But it was all about what are the... You know, the fears, frustrations, wants, and aspirations of people. And it was like the, the, the frustration is the, it was a circle, if you can imagine that, with a circle with a, like a, a scope, right? Like with the crosshairs in it. And uh, on one, one end, you've got the fears and frustrations. On the other, you've got the wants and aspirations. And the, the frustrations were, what are the things that people, the people that you want to work with are pissed off about right now that are annoying them, that are bothering them? It's immediate pain, right? So for the people that I work with, it's things like paying too much tax, they're not saving enough, they can't afford their first property or they can't afford whatever the thing is that they want. That's immediate and it's right now. Um, 
And then that leads to a fear and a fear is a a longer term bad thing. So it's like, I'm worried because I'm paying too much tax. uh, I'm not saving enough and I've got no idea about investing. And I'm worried that uh, I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to have to work forever. Mm. That's the fear, right? And then um, I might get in trouble off Steve because I'm giving away his jam, but... uh, (laughs) Then on the other end, it was the things that people want. And it's like uh, the wants are the things that they want right now. I want to pay less tax. I want to be investing better. And I want to be more confident in my finances. And then the aspirations are, and I want to be able to take care of my family or retire at 50 instead of 65 or whatever. So I spent a lot of time with Steve. And the most valuable thing was that model. But then applying it with him, and I worked with him for, for a couple of years like specifically on this and the, and the workshops workshops and events as well, but was about cre- crafting messages where you're getting people to like opt in and they, they're just opting into the pain. They, they understand that you understand them. And it's the same with we've both done the Key Person of Influence program, which is um, almost like more detailed but less practical because mm. I, I, I really like that Steve separates it to what are the frustrations which are the now and yeah. what are the fears which are the yeah. later, but yeah. both bad but yeah. different, whereas yeah. they're just like what are the key f- the, you know problems that people face, right? Yes. Um, so a lot of time just thinking about those problems and crafting marketing messages and, oh, man, I still, see, still hear Steve's voice in my head that is like, <laughs> you know, if you are a self-employed chiropractor, he used to always use his example, and you're, you're worried that you're paying too much tax and you're not investing enough and you're, um, you, you've super's in a mess and you're worried that you're um, going to be forced to be a slave to your job, uh, then I've created the three-step, you know, insert, 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 what did he used to say? Whatever, insert, you know, sexy name here, insert sexy name here. That's what he used to say, actually. Um, <laughs> lead magnet, which is the four-step guide to give you, and it's want, 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 aspiration. So that's the that's the formula. So when I, when I started my site, I was just like, are you a young professional that's you, you, I can't remember the exact things, but you know, your money's in the mess and blah, blah, blah. And I get people literally contacting me going, holy shit, um, I read that thing and that was exactly me. And I was just like, oh my God. Wow. And so you had, you had multiple? You had, you had one for chiropractor, you had one for plumber? No, no, no. His thing was chiropractor. Mine was young professional. Sure, um, sure. And I probably spread myself too far at the start that it was like, I've looked back at some of the stuff that I hadn't updated on the website for a while and it was like young professional executive or business owner. Now I don't, I don't say anything, although I do have a few business owner clients, but really that niching. And I think just um, spelling out people's problems and, and and key person of influence, KPI, they uh, they do a similar thing where you've got to become an expert in your customer's problems. So, you know, all of those things and Steve's, for, that same formula applies to, to live events. Uh, so th- really diving into deep, if you want to do a presentation about you know, whatever the topics are, it's like, what are the key frustrations in those topics? What are the fears that they lead to? And what are the um, what are the wants around that for those individuals? I still use it to this day. It's just become more and more refined that when I talk about, I talk about, you know, um, uh, cash flow, and then it's like the fears are X, Y, Z, and that leads you to, if you don't sort them out, it leads to this. Um, but if you do get this right, then it's like it gives you the want, want, want aspiration. That's amazing. Man, yeah, Steve, I remember Steve uh, breaking my brain with with that as well. Um, he, although I never became a, a coaching client, um, I went to a couple of his day seminars and, and, and using those questions in my pre- uh, initial meeting yeah. was phenomenal because originally it w- you know when you got no idea which is what I didn't when because hmm. I went from tax accounting to Dixon to AMP to starting my own yeah. company and I was like you know what just bring in your tax file oh, I, I remember saying this to people bring in your tax file number because 
I was like, well, legitimately, I can just make a call to all of their different products and we can get it, find it all right here, right? And then we can go on from there. Classic accountant. Oh, man. Yeah, and, and just, and then, and, and then over time, it got to, okay, well, bring in, you know, let me know what your, your revenue and your, your sorry, well, um, back then it was uh, your income and your expenses and your super and I'd ask them all the financial questions, yeah. but at least really, I didn't say. Really bad questions. Yeah, very, very bad yeah. questions yeah. to ask. And then, and then it was after, after meeting with Steve, it was, um, what do you want out of life? What don't you want out of life? Yeah. Um, Magic well, one list. Magi- I still use the magic one list. Man, he's got so many of these cool things, and and I, I, it would start Steve, with you, that. You owe us one, all right, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Actually, uh, when when next I went to Perth, I remember we ended up going out with 50th. Steve. It's right. It was Steve's fiftieth. So that bacon was, and whiskey, right? Oh yeah, that was super <laughs> cool going out with Steve in Perth. Um, in but a, that's in a yeah. cool bar as well. It's like I, an underground whiskey bar. Sick. Except American whiskey, which is you know, yeah, not yeah, really yeah, whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, I think it's you know, workshops are amazing. That like at the start, I was getting probably a third of our business from from events, um, a third from LinkedIn, and then uh, as the clients build up, I was getting a third from sort of random sources and clients. It's now it's sort of changed a little bit because we've got a few more clients. Um, I've gone skewed back a bit to LinkedIn since I've been doing all this media sort of stuff. But uh, I find that like it's like writing a book or doing a workshop is the same. That it, you know, it really forces you to really think in. And I think financial planners, everyone's got all this deep knowledge, you know, about all of these different you know things like technical stuff, but also the practical stuff that that people that, that that's important to them as well. And when you when you have to write an SOA, you don't really think about any, well, you think about the most technical of things, but the most technical of things are not the things that engage people, right? So when you have to get, like, find the things that are the messages that people connect with and the things that they want, that doing a workshop or writing a blog or writing a book, it forces you to yeah, really focus that in, and, and you and you think about what's most important to them. You think about some some good stories that they like, or that that are going to resonate, or that help you to explain points. And then I think it makes you a better, better. Like it's made me better in meetings with people because you hear. Like I remember you, you go to a workshop, and I can't even remember some of the things, but people would ask questions, and you go, "Holy shit." People don't even understand this thing that we just take for granted and you get so caught up in this financial planner speak and you're talking in these acronyms and all of this crap and like people are just, their head spinning and everyone, pretty much everyone just feels really dumb about their level of money knowledge. I had a meeting with a client today um, and even she said, she's like, shit, that meeting could have been an hour shorter if I knew more and I, I just feel really dumb and she, she she made the suggestion, she said you should like, maybe you could do some content stuff that for people on a really basic level. But I find that all people, it doesn't matter what their level is that they don't have, like they don't feel like they know enough. They feel like everybody else has it more together than what they do. So one of the big learnings from doing these workshops has been really ditching the jargon, dialing down the, the explanations and uh just just trying to keep things on the most basic possible levels because no one well some people normally dickheads they get upset if you're too basic but i just make sure when i promote my events that it's like i i'm really clear this is going to be super basics i'm not talking about complex investment strategies i'm not talking about complex tax strategies it's you know introduction type level which i think is really what a workshop is for definitely and and i and i'm going to come back to workshops um in 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 a second the thing that i now want to talk about so so you you've gone from successful ways you started pivot uh you engage you engage Vern gallery to uh to show yeah mate great designer the xy designer as well um and then uh, and then you go to Steve and you spend a bit of time with Steve and he, he gets you off the ground. Then you start from there, you start uh, c- aggressively linking in with people to build your audience. And then you're also following up with a, with a handout. 
Uh, like a what now was it a was it an intro message first with the download or was it just an intro message without the download and then if mm. they responded you would send them the download what what was that yeah so i had a i had a va f- at the start um and we were just connecting with like 100 people a day or something manually on linkedin and and then just emailing them like in batches just saying hey this is what I do. It's probably, a, you know, it's a bit more push, I suppose, but it's the virtual tap on the shoulder and saying, I've put together the chiropractor's three-step guide to cutting your tax and X, Y, Z in, the, in that formula. It wasn't a chiro- chiropractor thing again, but yep. um, that, that sort of thing. If you want it, let me know and I'm happy to send it to you. And then, you know, people would respond back and uh, you get the email and then you could mark it out to them yep. as well. Cool. Yeah, I feel, look. No, no, and and I and, and I I don't want to ha- like spend too much time on it because it was it was version one, it was version one of your marketing. Yeah, and but look that uh, that process was, you know, it was salesy for sure. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't do it the same. Well, I don't do it the same. I know now, you don't. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But that being said, I did get quite a lot of business out of that. So I got yeah. some of my best clients. So like, and if I trace the referral chains back through my business. Man, I got like you know a few hundred grand's worth of business out of out of that strategy. We, yeah, good, good, really good clients that I still work with today, which is excellent. Uh, yeah, for sure. And and so and I kind of want to go along the evolution here. Mm. And so you're doing this, and you and it was really awesome to watch <clears throat> because at the time I'm doing BNI and it's not doing anything. And then you're you're you doing got free coffee though, oh, free. sort of free, loving it. And then. Um, and uh, you're you you you're you're pushing out this content, and okay, it's a, it, it might not be the most sophisticated marketing channel, but you're doing something and it's working. And and I remember you saying to me, yeah, it's 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 uh, I'm getting some really good quality clients out of it, even though it's not exactly what I want to be doing. Um, it's it's still working. Yeah, and man, the, when you start your own business, correct. it's like shit. You gotta you gotta make yeah. some money, you know. Like absolutely, it's, especially with the from the marketing side. Like it, you, if you've got a good service proposition and you're adding value and you're gonna help it, it's not like you're shafting people when they get correct into, when they get into your funnel. Of course not. You just got to get them. And like yeah. I say, like I'd never really, I'd never got. I think I did one workshop or, or I, I, I did a number of workshops by myself at Successful Ways. One of them I got this really, really good client out of that we had a great relationship with, worked with them for like five years. But when I started my own business, I'd never done that before. Mm. And that was what I knew how to do. Well, not well, but I knew how to do, I knew how to do it. Well, I knew how to do advice pretty well. Yes. I knew how to do business very poorly. Sure. I, you know, all of those things. But what I didn't know how to do was get clients. So it's just like, I just got to yeah, man. figure that out. And then, um, and so you, you, you get a couple of years in and uh, uh, the big question I want to ask is, wh- so when they downloaded the, 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 the ebook or they went onto the, the, the email list, what were you inviting them to do? Were you inviting them to go to a workshop or were you inviting them to go to a meeting? Yeah, workshop. Ah, okay. So there you are. You've reached out. You've given them value um, if it applies to them. And then your only push is actually a quite a, a, a gentle one. It's yeah. here's an invitation to a workshop. Yeah. Now, how much were you charging for it, first question? 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Were you putting these on yourself or were you doing it for someone else like General Assembly or uh, these other companies that sort of do these workshops? Yeah, no, I um, I did them myself. I, I did a collab with another place that promotes workshops as yep. well. So we would take we would sort of take turns, but I was doing my own events primarily and then I was right. doing some other events with Holding them. Holding them where? In our office, in the office, yeah. right? So I was I had that space over on Martin Place, and yep. uh, they had a they had a uh, like a decent boardroom which you could sort of open up, and you could fit about thirty. Couple people. of drinks beforehand, or at the start I didn't. Now I do. Now okay. I give them as much booze as possible, as right. early as possible. That's, to make that's them relax. Something that's changed over time. Yeah. Right. So I'm just like get some really nice beers, some 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 wine. Because because it's quite you know as someone who's turned up to workshops, it's a little bit nerve wracking, mm. right? You're walking into a room. There's a bunch of people. We're we're all uh, unanimously have said that we lack uh, knowledge in said topic, yep. and so everyone's a little bit embarrassed, right? 
the fact that especially that, money yes yeah, especially more so you go to a digital correct. marketing thing it's like well yeah who understands digital marketing yeah right? yeah but yeah you go to a money thing it's like shit you well you got money yeah money's important yeah you should know that already yeah i'm an adult and how do yeah. i know yeah so i could imagine right they're walking into this uh this workshop um that you know are they interacting with each other or are they just interacting with you or how do you manage that pre-workshop yeah. vibe so i've got some email like sequences where we'll 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 email stuff out beforehand um oh, okay so they register for the workshop which then sets off a chain reaction for emails yeah but not all of the people so now what i do is i i cross promote the workshops with other people and i don't what does I, that mean so I have, I have a, there's two other companies that promote my workshops right? and they sell through their side. I sell through my side. They probably sell more than what I do, sure. to be honest. Um, so when that happens, I don't have, they're not coming into my system, you know, the people when they book tickets. Right. So you can't foster them as well, but no. they're probably doing their own fostering for you. But not this, not what you would ideally sure. want, where you're sure. trying to, you know, under, like give them the, ideally you want them understanding the content, understanding what's important, understanding you a bit mm. before they come in. So most, you know, probably 50 to 75% of the room generally come in pretty cold. Okay. They just come in, have a chat. Yeah, I just try and intro and... Um, so you go around and try to talk to everyone? No. No. No, no. no. I just, uh, I'll just say hello to people if I'm I'm normally just, just sort of, you know, waiting around. Hovering? Hovering, yeah. It's kind of awkward. Well, is it hovering? Maybe that's not the right word. I don't know. I'm just so you flo- You're just floating around. No, actually, normally I'm trying to figure out how to get the fucking projector to work. <laughs> <laughs> and getting annoyed at Yang because she's forgotten the bloody feedback forms again. But um, <laughs> there's normally something going on. I'm, right. I so you, I'm so really you're not hovering. just sort I'm just of, like standing you're there. You're not standing in the Do corner you, I mean, surveying not, your crowd. No, no. I'm, okay. I'm normally trying to encourage them to get lickered up before the workshop starts. Mm. That's the that's the general sense. Making sure everything's happening, you know. Okay. Yeah. So so again, going back in the and when did you or or, or have you started doing it again? Are you still offering something via LinkedIn? Yeah. Oh no, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. But I am getting a lot of clients off LinkedIn at the yes, moment. Yes, but that that's that's because you've built your profile. So there's no longer you're no longer sort of sending out. Uh, download this? No. Okay, cool. So, but whether someone, if someone contacts you directly, are you still sending them to the workshop first? Uh, no, oh, like, no. Okay. No, no, if they contact me now, so with LinkedIn, yeah, we get a bit, like, I, and I connect, I, you know, um, connect with a lot of people on LinkedIn. I don't offer any guides or anything but i just drop them a note for the for um people but if anyone messages me back and say i like what you do i want to know more i'll send them our <clears throat> i'll send them our guide like like our corporate profile which is a another thing that steve so, steve yeah yes. so that i've sort of evolved out over over a, you know a, a bunch of years and i just send them that depending on what level of interest they show in the in the message i just say like if it's a low level of interest i just say here's what we do you know, um, great to be connected. Look forward to staying in touch. If that's a moderate level of interest, it's like, well, here's the the document. It talks about what we do. Um, probably, if you want to know more, probably easiest if we chat through on the phone. You're welcome to book a call in my calendar. There's a link, uh, and they can do that. Or if it's high level, it's like, yeah, let's chat. Um, here's the link. There's the document. Have a chat. Have a read before we catch up. So. Here's a link. Read the document. The link to my account, like you know, if they want to, if they say I want your help, yes. I'll say okay, great, let's have a chat. This is how the chat's going to work. There's a link to my calendar. Book a Re- call. Calendly or whatever Calendly. it is. Calendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calendly. Ah, yes, I know it's Calendly because it's in your um, email signature. Yeah. And occasionally, I would book phantom meetings with your mama. Your mama has been. You the made guest. Yang very angry. <laughs> I remember I tried to get the other guys to do it, and they're like, no. Yeah. It's like, okay. It's because it's a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> and hilarious move. Um, okay, so so let, let's now go to KPI. So you, you, you spend some time with Steve, and then you move into the key person of influence. Mm-hmm. Um, what have you learned from that year or nine months um, that you're now incorporating? Yeah, look, I think KPI was was amazing. Yeah. Um, just the 
intenseness of the whole thing, like just so full on. And I didn't, you know, it's a 40 week program. I I was six months into my business when I started. Uh, so I couldn't do all of the things where they have the, you know, their five steps. Uh, I really focused in on the, the value foundation or the pitch module, which is basically the four forces and then your values and then the, and then the problems and, and stuff. Uh, so really honing that marketing message. And I feel like that was a, like a fairly natural evolution of the stuff that I'd been doing with Steve. Yeah. Um, but also it, I feel like because I'd done the stuff with Steve, I got even more out of it because I'd already thought about it one. And then I was also able to distill it into the, you know, the now problems and the future, future me problems. So that was good. I still use the pitch, the product method side of things where you're really just trying to distill your, what, what are your, like, what are the core philosophies? So for, for my business, it's, um, you know, having good cash flow, having a good strategy in place and having great investments. That's a core, that's our three elements, not steps, but elements that you need to get right. Uh, so <clears throat> yeah, just really that. And that took me a long time to to get there uh, with you. You get caught up, at, or for me in particular, because I'm very process minded. It's like, well, we understand what you want, and then we, you know, <laughs> do these things, and they're just going, no, <laughs> dumb. Like that's your process, and it's not your it's not your methodology. So I think just really just spending all of that time, really, you know, I think if any if any advisor that that really cares about their clients and provides a good service you get caught up and you're just doing it naturally and you're just doing what you do and you're helping people and it's great and they're happy and you're happy and it's working. But when you spend really like critical thinking time, just uh, focusing in on your business and why are you doing it and, and what, and why is that important and what's important and, you know, all of those things, then you end up, there's a certain magic and you just, you just get real clarity on, the things that make you different from everybody else. And that's important because there's so many people and everybody, everybody's got a place. There's, you know, we don't have to, there are so many consumers out there that it, it, you're not competing against other financial planners. You're just trying to engage people that they're the people that you want to help or the people that you built your service to help sort of thing. So yeah, I find that that all of that time spent thinking about the methodology and then and then pitching the methodology like in your cuz I do it all in my intro calls you know my 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 10 or 15 minute introductory calls and you just constantly and they talk about in KPI the thousand pitches I feel like I've done my thousand now but now it just it connects right cuz I've spent so much time and you spend time and people say why is that and then you have to explain that thing you know like 50 times and you go after the 10th time you go actually that's a bit dumb actually it would be better if it was that thing and it's just that you know, it's the constant improvement, and this, this is something that we've spoken a lot about. That just incrementally better. You don't have to, you know, you're not jumping, you know, uh, the Great Wall. It's just like let's let's. It's the game of inches. Keep it moving forward, uh, and you just gotta just gotta be in the game and uh, keep that focus. But um, yeah, I think that's valuable. The the KPI sort of accelerates that because there's so much time that you're spending on. <clears throat> you know, on your service, on the business. I didn't really do the, you know, they they talk about pitch, which is your value foundation, your problems, your pro, uh, product, profile, publish, and partnerships. I really didn't do the profile, publish, or partnerships. Most of the time that I spent was on the product and the and the, and the the pitch, which is your value foundation. Well, you, I think you already do the, the partnerships quite well because you team up with other companies that uh, essentially feeding you potential clients by via workshops. Yeah. Look, I, I think I just lucked out on that at the start and, and got in a, in a good opportunity. I wouldn't say I did it particularly well. I'd say I got fairly lucky. Um and then, well, I, th- I think that's the purpose of the partnership piece in in the in the key person of influence course. It is to team up with people who are willing to to sell your stuff for you. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I I never really gave it like because that I started doing those workshops from pretty much be, the day that I started the business. Yeah, I remember, and it was it's uh, it's a very unique thing. I've uh, I still don't know anyone else that does it. It blows my mind. I'm sure there are advisors that do it. I mean, when we're at 
when we're, we're in previous jobs we've had, um, I've, I've seen uh, sort of bigger companies do these things, but mm. I've never seen the way that you do this. And and it's always it's always astonished me. I think it comes from that. I don't want to rely on anyone for business. I, yep. I don't want. I don't want a, a, a center of influence. I don't want a COI. I don't want a referral partner. Yep. I want to be responsible for everything. And I, and that's taking you down this track. And and so, let's say there's someone. Okay, I, actually, this is not really making sense to me. So, if people contact you via LinkedIn, they you either say, "Yep, yeah, cool." Look forward to, you know, chatting or, oh, yeah, cool, here's my thing or, yep, yeah, cool, here's my thing and let's meet. Chat. It's always a phone call first. Okay, so. Uh, but- it's just the three levels. So if they say, hey, Ben, saw your profile, love what you do, I want you to help me with my money. I say, okay, great. Um, here's a document with a bit more about what we do, but let's chat on the phone. The phone call is going to work like this. We're going to talk about what you do. We'll talk about what I do. There's a link to book the call. Yep. Or people might say, oh, hey, interesting business. Would like to know more. I say, well, here's a here's the document. Check out the document. If you want to know more, more than happy to jump on a call. Here's the link. Right. Or if people go, I can't even think of a low-level one, but they show a low level of interest. It's a yo mama. No, that's just, no, I wouldn't <laughs> reply to that. In fact, in fact, I'd probably block them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but if, if it's a low level of interest, it's like, Here's uh, yeah, whatever. Here's the here's the document. Um, look forward to staying in touch. So there's no link. You know what I mean? Like no link to my calendar. I mean, yeah. Okay. Now, who who are you inviting then to the workshops? Well, now I've got a now I've got a sort of a sizable mailing list. Like it's not enormous, but we've got a bit over fifteen hundred people on there. Oh, so you're not really offering. Oh right, so the link is to a phone call. So now, because now so it's, you're well, it's not all really inbound. saying to people here, come to a come to a thing. You're sort of handling that as its own funnel, like contact person to person contact. It yeah. goes to phone call to meeting. Well, it's all inbound now. Sure, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah, push yeah, out. yeah. I don't push out. I do sure. connect with a lot of people, but yes. when I just connect, it's like good to connect. Yeah, and so all your inbound stuff, it's let's have a chat if you're interested, and then meeting. Mm. Which is one funnel. And then another funnel entirely is this digital marketing 1,500 people strong yeah. campaign. What? So that's that's where you're advertising your your workshops, is it? Yeah. So, well, people – so we've got some content on our website so where people can, you know, you can download some guides and, and books and stuff or check out the blogs and opt into stuff, opt into the newsletter. Uh, and then I – yeah, I send like a, a monthly email. Right. It's normally a link to a piece or two if I depending on what I write during the month. And then normally at the bottom there's a sentence. So you blog. Blog. Yeah. How many times a month? Well, because I just launched my book, I've been a bit quiet and I've also been doing a bit of paid writing stuff for some other uh people. So uh, You're getting paid to write. Now getting paid to write. For who? I'm a writer. Uh writing for Oh, should I say? Oh, you don't have to. Mm. No, don't. Yeah. If you're if you're wondering, don't. Uh, so yeah, so uh, uh, you know, so that's sort of tying up a bit of the time, and then with everything else, and we've just because all this stuff, like the business, has basically just exploded in the last uh, six months. So mm. uh, I've been struggling to find the time, but I normally I'll do at least one a month, and then I email the I email the uh, the list out and say here's the here are the pieces. Um, and then normally there's a sentence at the bottom that says, you know, we've got events coming up this month or something. Right. So it's value in the email with, if you want to know more, come to an event. Yeah. I don't really push. The only, like I'll do a campaign, like I'll do a campaign at the start of next year to say, we've got our courses up. Uh, the workshops are up for this year. Check them out. If you want to, if you want to check it out, come along. Mm-hmm. Um but always, it's just that's there. It's just the constant. And this is the LinkedIn and it's everything, man. It's just the digital tap on the shoulder. Mm. And then you have to get people to to opt in. I think this push marketing, it's uh, especially for young people. It depends on the audience, but especially for young people, it's like you don't want that. Like I, uh, what was this site? I was talking to Michael back and he put me onto this site and it's some marketing guru site. 
And anyway, so I opted into this thing and it was like every day and it was a full on hardcore, like they wanted to buy this thing and then it was like, I'll discount this. And then it's like, oh, you can buy this thing and then there's a package here and then you do that. After about four days, I was like, man, I'm out. Like, no way. I think it was digitalmarketer.com or Digital Marketer Online or something like that. And it was just so hectic that, I don't know, for me, I hate well, that shit. Yeah, me too. But that stuff definitely, definitely does work. But I think for uh, just a segment of society that's happy to deal with that. Yeah. And if that's not the type of people that you want to deal with, then it's not the right way no. to market them. Yeah. On on Backy for a second, mm. I know I know you've been working or have worked with him for you know for a couple a, of years. Yeah, a couple of years. What what are you learning from him? Uh man, look, I with with Backy, like he's amazing. He's got a great brain. He compliments the stuff that I do. I think really well, and uh, I think collectively, like the two of us together, come up with something that's better than what either of us would be able to do individually mm. uh, so he deeply understands my business now because we've been working together for so long at the moment we're working on our all of our email sequences okay yep so through our whole like from someone from someone like coming in to download the guide new subscriber on the website uh, then it's like what happens what's the email chain then they they book a ticket to an event, what happens? You know, all of those different things. Book a mm. phone call, there's an email sequence. So when someone clicks a calendar, we've got Zapier, goes into active campaign, there's a sequence that comes off the back of that. Um, so we're just, yeah, we're re-engineering that at the moment. He helped me work on my course that I was chatting to you about uh, just before, which uh, which didn't end up where exactly where I wanted it to be. But, you know, all of those things. Um, and then project management of, of, of stuff as well. So I think it's good... You know, especially if you're a, if you're the, the business owner, like it's just you, no partner in the business and you're the one that's driving all the marketing activities. I think it's good. You know, you want coaches, you want programs, you want support uh, because it, you know, keeps you, keeps you moving everything forward. Make sure that you've got that sanity check there, gives you the confidence. And if you get the right people, then it enhances the, the output, I think. Yeah, right people is hugely important. Um Okay, so I'm just trying to figure this out in my head. So, Le- so uh, um, actually, we'll, we'll get. It's probably a good time to get to this point. Um, you've done a lot for your uh, public profile, um, but first of all, by by being, I, I I think what's allowed you to build your public profile is the amount of time that you've spent, as we've already discussed during this podcast, on your value. And the amount of time that you've spent critically and deeply thinking about what it is that you do and how best to communicate it. I think that's sort of the prerequisite to get to the position where you're now being asked to, to go on uh, free-to-air TV. Um, so I, I guess what my question is, do you now see much value in being – um, in doing workshops, because as you've said, sort of the, the workshops are really only a third of your audience and then two thirds from whoever your partner is that, that is doing the workshop. Actually, quick question. What percentage of those people that go to your workshop uh, come to a, a first meeting? Uh, I don't really promote it out now, but I, I've found that it's probably it's probably low there is a stat it's in our crm sure it's actually low i've i've really this is probably not the the answer that you want but i've recently realized that uh i look i've got good clients out of the workshops as i mentioned before yes and i really enjoy doing the workshops but the workshops aren't really great for business really yeah so interesting there are like and look that being said i've got a you know in the if twenty people came, would you get one? Depends on who and where. So I've been doing some different ones with different audiences. Uh, I find that, and and this needs some critical thinking on my part. But you know, in the last in, like this year, I've got three out of seventeen clients from workshops. When you say and seventeen I've, clients, those the seventeen that have come to a first meeting. No, no, no. That have like that have become clients. 
Yep. So what I mean is, so you've had 17 people come to a first meeting? Or oh, I think 20. I think we have 20. I think I missed three. So so 20 have come to a first meeting and then three people have become clients? No, no, no. 17 people have become clients and then oh. three people, but three people have come from the workshops. Oh, I understand. Out of all your clients, three new clients. This year. This, this yeah, year. This financial year to date. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's still low, but I still think that the workshops are insanely valuable because it forces you, as I said, to clarify your message. And also I feel like all of the events, they all create a lot of momentum. So you've got you've got an easy in for people. Mm. And then you've got like a – there's also like a nurture effect with, with people. And they talk about this nurture with, with digital marketing, but nurture with – events because like you say with the with the LinkedIn stuff and the content marketing, it's a very easy step to say come to come to an event. Yes, it is. As opposed to saying come to this scary meeting or book a phone call yes, when yes. you don't know. So um look I you know I can get people into a phone call from from the events, but I've recently decided that it's not the most effective use of my time with all of the the other things going on. But with the right audience, I'll do that and then we'll we'll get you know, eighty-five plus percent into a phone call, and then we can, and then we can sort of triage from there. But I, as I say, I've been a bit stretched for time, and we've we've been. Yeah, I think the big caveat here with uh, you compared to probably a, a lot of other advisors is you're looking for um, younger people that are on quite high incomes. So it's yeah. so you're probably your 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 uh, your rate of call it conversion or people that you think it's good to work with and they think it's good to work with you is probably uh, lower than most but yeah. that would be as a result of your requirements to to become a client um, which is why which is why I wanted to talk to you about sort of the level of m- marketing that you do now a, a, a rudimentary googling of your name which Ben even though we're good mates I still did before this meeting um, you'll find podcasts of your live presentations yeah and so what I can tell from that is you're you're doing uh, events for select professional communities yeah for different businesses so if I meet someone and they've got because these days a lot of people want to add more value to their to their people. Like you talk to even the traditional people like accountants, mortgage brokers. Lawyers, which lawyers. is the one that I saw or heard, I should say. Uh, maybe recruiter. Recruiters. It was a recruitment. I did one with a recruitment business and they just do a, you know, monthly event for their peep, for their one, their staff and two, their community. Um, a, amazing, amazing uh, initiative for just from a passionate entrepreneur that wants to add a ton of value. And I think like, I want to add more value to my clients. I'm doing a collab with the with the lady um, Kirsty Carr, total legend. We're going to do something in January where she's she's all about values and and all about this uh, the neuroscience and connecting people and you know limiting beliefs and we're going to do a whole thing around that. Like for me, like that's great for her. That's great for me and great for my clients. So yeah, will some of them end up talking to her afterwards? I hope so. Like probably, like that's fine, and and everyone's doing that these days. Workplaces do it. Um, any service based business, I think. Well, a lot of service based businesses are uh, they're looking for more ways that they can add value for the right people. It gets exposure, and if it's if if what you do is good, and and the people, and you've got the right message that connects with those people, <clears throat> then then great, you connect like. So, so yeah, so that that's all just come about that anytime if I meet someone, if they, you know, you understand their business and they, they talk about, oh, we do these things, like, great, let's, uh, ready to go. Like, it's off the shelf. I've got the description there. I've got the thing. I've done it a hundred times. Like, uh, it's easy. And then it's, it's great exposure. And that one met some really, really great people, got some good opportunities, a couple of amazing clients out of it. Uh, and but then also it creates even further opportunities, and that's what I mean. That it's all, it's all momentum. I think. Um, I thought. I thought. To be honest, when I was listening to it, you, I thought you were quite smooth. I th- yeah. I, yeah. I, I could tell this wasn't your first 
rodeo, man. Like it was, you, you, you were, you were, dare I say, it, even funny with that monotone voice. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you're able to pull out any comedy whatsoever blows my mind. Mate, I sometimes I you know raise the. Uh, uh, so I wouldn't really say it's monotone. No, okay. <laughs> and 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 so let let's get to this. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty funny. <laughs> Let's get to this latter end, um, which is the book and the fact that you're, you're doing occasional, um, you know, uh, appearances on Sunrise. Um, go unstuck yourself. Get unstuck. That's it. Get unstuck. All credit to Clayton Daniel for that. Please. Um, where? What are you doing with this? Right. Clearly, uh, I mean, if if the if you're listening and you haven't already bought it, it's a number one bestseller on Amazon. But please review. Please review. That's a key part. Um, so, what is the book about, and where does it play its role now in your business? Yeah. So, look, the book follows our product method in that that I worked through with the KPI. So, those three elements that I mentioned before. So, your you know money management, your strategy, and your your investments. Um, Are you going to start giving them out of workshops? I think that I think makes I'll, sense, man. Yeah, I think I will at some. I think maybe I'll sell them at some others. I think I just judge. I don't know. We'll see. KPI use it as a as a business card. Yeah, but they get they get ballers in every room. So yeah, okay, you know, fair enough. I think, yeah. So, but definitely like first meetings. Everyone that comes in. But for let's a meeting, think about it. it's probably ten dollars to get printed though. Who cares? Mm. Just give them out. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, maybe haven't haven't really nailed that down yet. I'm still waiting for the print to come out, uh, which which will be in the next month. We'll have a bit of a parte, but hell yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah. Look, the the book was the book was amazing in just clarifying your thinking as to why the things that you think are important are important to you. Like unbelievably, like you know, I um, well, you know, as a, as an author yourself, and I had sort of got bits and pieces from you when you were writing your book. But then when I went to write my book, and then you have to like you research stuff and you oh, look man. into things, oh, and then man. you go, then you're like, Holy you got to read all these other books. Read, oh man, I read so many books, so <laughs> yeah. many really. It bad is ridiculous. Books. You got to really you got to write bad. a book, and all you do yeah. is end up reading books. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. So, um, but no, like the like you know the you, you taught me cash flow. Mm. Um, I like. For, for ages, I just knew that that worked and I saw it work mm. and I was like, cool. That's it's a no-brainer. That's good enough for me. That works. Mm. But then when I started doing the research, I was like, hmm. I was like, okay, willpower, power of barriers, uh, temptation, like all of those things, automation, the information overload, the, you know. What's the, this temptation? Talk to me about that. The, well, the willpower depletion, power of temptation. Power of temptation. What's that? Well, like you, you've only got uh, you know so many willpower credits, Roy, Roy Bowmeister. Right. Uh, so you get the, the willpower. The power of temptation. That that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's there's uh, you know you give in to temptation there, like in, in anything because you use up your willpower and then mm. um, and then you and then you like you've only got so much. I know I do it myself. My you know, I try to flex, but uh, clearly I'm using too much of my willpower in a professional context. <laughs> I think it's hilarious because I tried to get beers banned from the uh, the XY podcast, and just and I lasted about half of one podcast until. It's just because you drink too much and then eat Anzac cookies into the microphone. You just have to stop doing that. <laughs> But no, all of those things were like the, 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 and they give you so many analogies and stories to tell clients. And then those are the things that make your service connect. So when you yeah. do a, you do an intro meeting with people and people go, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And then you go, yeah, bang, 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 like stats. This is why, this is why it's important. This yeah. is why it matters for you. And yeah. then they go, oh, shit. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you have assets? Um, when I say assets and, and non, in KPI parlance, but, uh, you know, uh, illustrations that you've sort of invented? Well, I've recently been doing, so since I left KPI, I had a bit of a, a bit of a break. And then I've been working with David Dugan since then, as you know, yeah. your favorite. Yeah. Uh, shout outs, Mr. Dugan, Dr. Dugan, I should say. Um, so we, he's recently engaged this guy, super genius, Simon Bowen. Look him up. Uh, he is amazing. He's a crazy, uh, one of these people that, you know, uh, we were chatting about this uh, offline. 
just great models. He he talks in models. Everything's models, like visual models to explain things. So I've been spending a lot of time on the visual models recently to try and make the tangible, the intangible a bit more tangible. So I, I've got some sort of tools now that I use. I still use Steve Salvia's um, uh, 3Rs worksheet, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure we can probably convince him to give us a download link to put in the show notes for anyone that's listening. Uh, that, but yeah, that 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 process, so simple, but just like what what success look like? Where are you at now? What are the roadblocks? What are the issues? I do that and then I just go into the into the stories and the models and um, that's my that's my sort of engagement process now. but I, I think it's like you know the more time you spend on these things and you 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 know you write a book or you do workshops and you can t- then you can tell stories about the people at the workshops and then you can tell stories about the clients like obviously confidential but um then you have models like the cash flow thing and you talk about that and you talk about the psychology and the research and uh you talk about the book and the research and then you do the things and like you know it's just it's just all tools and i think that the culmination it, it just gives you you've you've got a million stories that, or or you know, analogies or whatever that you can wheel out for for whatever client, and I think that that's what it ends up being compelling. That we were you know chatting before about soft skills, and really that's the most important thing to identify what the person wants, but then to be able to communicate and have all of those those stories available or the tools available to um explain why that why they're feeling the way that they are or why it's possible to do the thing that they want to do then that's when you get the traction and so we've discussed about four or five maybe even six different ways that you get people into that first meeting and the last thing i want to talk about uh is what are you discussing in that introduction okay so you've already done the call and 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 probably what 50 50 people that don't come in for the first meeting people that do so what i do now and this has been a big game changer for us is uh i now i tell everybody what our fees are before they come in for the meeting that's awesome yeah i used to hold it back got it from glenn carlson from from kpi i was facing this massive frustration patch because our fees are high Mm. but our service is amazing in my uh very you know unbiased opinion yep um so yeah, he's like, well, you t- you're freaking them out because you tell, and I think it's a common thing that this is what I'd always done in financial advice that you have these conversations. They they say, what are the fees? You're like, oh, it's this range, and you give them this bullshit range, and then they come in at the end, and you go, bang, that's the fee, and then they freak out and they say they have to think about it. So now I just say, well, th- this is the fee. I used to say it in the phone call, but now I don't say it in the phone call that much. Uh, but I've created a video and I just send them the video that explains the whole service and all of the fees. Right. So book the meeting and I say, I'll send you the video. Please watch the video. It explains oh, the fees. Oh, right. So you discuss, have a decision. You, you decide if it's a good fit and if it's a good fit. And what percentage of that of those phone calls do you think is a good fit? Uh, well, I've been lucky lately, so so it's reasonably high. Um, but prior to you becoming a, a, a D-list celebrity, uh, look, um, D, D, I'd say C, D minus, maybe C plus, I'd say D minus at best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, yeah, probably. Uh, look, I'm, yeah, one third of of our prospects in this financial year, I've screened out. Okay, cool. So two thirds come in. Brilliantly, I would say. Well, one, th- well, two thirds, I don't screen out of them. Probably eighty percent come in. Right. So once- some people opt out. Some people, you go, well, I think you're okay, and they go, nah, nah, I don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, so that. Happens. So you end up with about half. Let's call it half. So about half, maybe sixty percent, come. Yeah, that's about half. Ca- yeah, ca- good math. Come, come to the first meeting, right? Now the awesomely. No, that's not right. Of the phone call, half the people that you're having a phone call with come to the first meeting. Maybe I maybe I got those numbers wrong. No, I'd say it's probably about. Well, we have got yeah one third uh, one third end up in a meeting. Okay, one third end up in a meeting, and awesomely, uh, you're sending them an introductory video. In there, you talk about your fees. Yeah, so before, that's brilliant. So, so, I so never thought of it. That's excellent. Yeah, 
yeah, I thought it was good. Um, I thought it would work. I wasn't sure, and the video is not perfect, but now I say, book the meeting, uh, book the meeting with them, and I say, I'm gonna send you the video, it goes for 15 minutes. If it's a couple, I say, please sit down and watch it together. It goes through everything in the service. And then what I find is that probably about 5% of people, they cancel their meeting. Cool. And I'm like, well, that's good. Yeah. Because like, I don't have to have the meeting. Yeah. They don't have to waste their time. Yeah. They were never going to become a client anyway. Yeah. Fine. That's excellent. Yeah. That's really good. Um, I remember there was a uh, Patreon. Patreon had this weird thing where there was a video from the founder, but it was literally super quote unquote authentic. It was literally just him walking around holding his phone, like recording it mm-hmm. like it like not professionally at all. And I thought that was a really authentic, you know, to use the term, uh, video. Um, whether that's now become kitsch or not is is another question to be had, but... That's my greed. <laughs> Did he have a selfie stick? <laughs> no, thankfully oh, right. not. okay. Um, that's kitsch. So... <laughs> Cheers, Mike. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so how do you, how have you done that video? I just do PowerPoint to YouTube. So, so it's not even a talking head. It's just no. Oh. yeah. No, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I've, I do have a few videos like that, but I thought for that it wasn't appropriate. I, I just built a slide deck that just explained the service. It explained the um, you know w- what I wanted to get across. You know, I had some key points where a fee only business. I wanted to make that clear. I wanted to make it clear that they didn't have to decide now, but I did want to tell them the fees. So I just step through, you know, what's involved. The fee covers this, this, this. That's what the cost is. You know, we've got a single, like an individual's fee and a couple's fee. The ongoing fee is this. There's no lock-in. You pay the retainer while we're your client, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Don't decide now. Come in for the chat. But what I found, like, there are a number of things that happen, so I wouldn't attribute it just to that. But I have absolutely no doubt that that's, that's resulted in this significant increase in our conversion Also, rate. remove all, all awkwardness yeah you know what i they mean? already know yeah you're walking in you know they know uh they know that you know that they know yeah and uh, nothing hidden you've been able to really put forward your value and i would suggest probably the fact that you've done a hundred workshops means that you're very good at articulating your value and the amount of times that you've the amount of time that you've spent figuring out why you're an advisor and what it is that you you develop and i think it all it all culminates in in this video, which is awesome, man. And then they walk in, and and then you got your first meeting. How long does it go for, and what are you discussing? Well, it goes for um, probably about. I'm trying to make it shorter, but it's it's between sort of an hour and fifteen and an hour and thirty. Okay. Um, yeah, we discuss as I I mentioned it before, like the three R's. So the reality Roblox results exercise that I got from the Italian stallion himself. Uh, then I go into, into uh, the, basically I, I sort of ad lib from there. So, but I've got some tools that I use. So I, t- I t- talk about the buckets at a really high level with most people. And then I have this this model that from Simon Bowen that I always use. So it's a, it's a genius model. I can't talk too much about it because I've signed a waiver to say that I won't, but you can look it up. He's got an online course, Simon Bowen, completely genius. Um, models method is his business. Uh, so I so I use that. Signed a waiver that you can't talk about. Allowed. That's his whole business, right? So this guy is like an, like an ultra... Um, like, you can't talk about his business model. No, no, no. You're not allowed to... You're not allowed to teach anyone else his that model, like any of his models, really, because he's because it's a proprietary thing. I think he's patented all of them, like they're all patented. So mm. anyway, mm. right? Works. For, well, anyway, horses for courses. Yeah, fair enough. So I use that. I use that model, and then there are a couple of other uh, a couple of other models that I talk about uh, sometimes, depending on the person, how much they want to talk, but really just like the three R's talks about what their version of success is, make sure that I can deliver on it, understand, drag them into the, and this is another salvia thing that like drag them into the frustration that they're feeling so that because people have these, these rose colored glasses about their own finances that like, Oh, I want, you know, the $4 million beach house in Coogee. And, and, and I say, well, what's stopping you from getting there? And they say, Oh, we don't have enough time. 
And I'm like, well... Time. Or, like, that's, a you know, just one example. Or, like, we you know, we don't have the motivation or whatever. But it's not really that. It's like there are a million things under there. You've got no idea how to do it. You don't have the right team. You're not saving enough. You don't have a good process. You don't have a good strategy. You don't know how to manage risk. You don't even know where the risk is coming from. You don't, you know, you know, like all of these things. So yeah. what you want to get, when you get people to articulate that, then they go, holy shit, there's a lot of things that I need help with, which is true, right? And if you don't, if you don't help them identify that, then you're really doing them a disservice. But when they do identify that, they go, crap, well, there's a problem. Now I need help. Uh, and then you go, and then I go, like the the big model, the genius model that I use is all about our philosophies, which are like the key areas that we focus on. We talk about the product method. We talk about what drives success in all of those areas. And um, yeah, that's really like the the main the main part of it. And then I t- and then from there I take I just take them through our process. The pr- I've got a process map which is the steps involved, and I just say this is how it works. It's a roadmap. It's process our process, map. like like the like our in meeting the book? process. So no no no, no, uh, no no oh is it in the book? Maybe it is. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, but it's really like the from the first meeting. It's the meeting process. So we do a first meeting. We do a fact find meeting. We do a strategy meeting. We do an advice presentation meeting. We do the execution. Then we work with them over time to do all the things. So so it's just showing them that, but explaining all of the steps and how they work. What happens in between each step. And that's on a bit of paper. What? I do it on the iPad. Yeah, that's part of my corporate uh... profile. Part of my corporate profile, which I've already sent to them. Oh right, so so it's it's well designed from You've seen Vern. It, the map. Yeah, man. The snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It's on my website. Yeah. yeah, right. So it's just all that thing. So you just tell them how it's going to work. Then I tell them about a little bit about the business. So I talk about you know we're uh, licensed with the Wealth Network, privately owned, privately licensed. You know, freedom around our products. Um, small business. I talk about. You know, family business. Yang works in the business. My wife, as you know, um, I tell them that I, you know, I wouldn't take them. I wouldn't try and t- take them through the process unless I knew that they were going to be really happy at the end. So I don't like having difficult conversations with people. Uh, then I ask them if they've got any questions about me or about the business. Sometimes something comes out of that. Most of the time, it doesn't. And then I just say, okay, well, there's the here's the fees. This is how it works. How many complaints do you get about the beard? None. <laughs> None at all. Then None I don't believe all. anything you've said tonight. <laughs> don't think so. Well, they get the videos, so that's part of our sequence. So as soon as someone books a phone call, there's like videos are coming through. So if you don't like me, like don't come in. Don't have the phone call. Like cool, totally cool. I understand that. I'm uh, me. So, you know, I can't change that. You know, as I'm sure you can appreciate. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> Mate, thank you so much for um, kicking off the marketing series. I think you were absolutely the right person to, to, to do it. Having watched your career, consistently impressed me, Amigo. Um, so thank you very much for sharing everything you have today. Would you like to create a course for xyadvisor.com? I think I did one, didn't I? No, oh, mate, you were part of one. Would you like didn't to do? Would you like to do your own one? I'd like to, yeah. Very good. I'm locking that in with him. <laughs> All right, thanks, mate. Cheers, Let's get mate. A beer. Cheers, bye.